Dr. Devendra Gaujan for, for his talk on value addition, something which uh, Dr. Long also was talking about just a couple of minutes ago. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh... Sorry. So thank you, uh, Chair. Okay, could you see my? Yes, yes, we can see your computer screen. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much. Okay, distinguished Chair, Co-Chair, participant, ladies and gentlemen. So let me show my video. Okay, I, <laughs> okay if I could. Well, uh, I'm, uh, this presentation uh, topic, value addition, value chain, and market development of niche mountain agro products is based on my uh, work in uh, particularly in Nepal, Himalayan mountains, though some of the information comes from other parts of the world. And specifically, uh, 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 this, in this presentation, I'd like to focus on you know, the blueprint approach of the uh, development that is practiced elsewhere cannot be suitable in the mountains because of unique feature and nature of the mountain ecology. Uh, because mountains have specific, you know, constraints and they have a, uh, challenges as well as some opportunities which we can explore that opportunity through value addition, value chain and market development. Sir, please well, open your file, sir. Your PPT file is, please open your file. Yeah, I have opened it. Is it? No, it it's not visible here. Your, only your, your list of the files is there on the screen. But I, I could I, I could see here. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, so again, I have to do it. Yeah. It's I been highlighted. See. Yeah, please open the file. Yeah. I will close it again and I'll again do it. Yeah, that's a good that's a good strategy. Do you see now? Hello? No, sir. No, no sir. Abita kul khulani. It's not opened yet. <laughs> Welcome. You please close this uh, and then you redo. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So I will just stop sharing again. Yeah. Uh, I can hike. How could I can see here? Yeah. You can see. Yeah. Me? Now we can see it. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Because well, sorry for some uh, time. It's okay. Not a problem. Okay. So I think I have already shown the topics of my topic. I don't need to explain more again. So um, my name is Devin Agosan. Uh, basically my disciplinary background is agriculture economics, though I have broader experience of agriculture development and natural resource uh, management uh, with uh, more than two, uh, two decades of experience in different countries. Wow. So I have already uh, uh, presented my why we need to focus on this topic. So I'll go briefly about the outlines of the presentations. <clears throat> so first I'll focus on uh, briefly about Himalayas and concept of niche mountain products, and then concept of value addition, value chain and niche market, and then value chain and market system analysis, and, uh, and priority, then priority strategy for niche mountain value chains, why we need to focus on that and then biodiversity-based value chain and conclusion and well for what? Well, uh, the feature of Himalayan mountains, I already mentioned that because of the high elevation, unique features and ecology uh, in the Himalayan mountains are a bit different from other mountains because of the you know, complex uh, topographic feature, steep undulating uh, slopes, relief and, and some of the highland valleys. 
So because of this unique uh, ecology, uh, uh, Himalayan mountains are also the center of the hottest spot of the global biodiversity uh, with high potential for unique niche products, particularly agriculture products. Uh, so uh, let me just explain uh, some of the uh, about elaboration about mountain specificity and why there is a comparative advantage in the uh, mountains. <clears throat> well, I think we have already uh, the past presenters in the last two, three days, we have already discussed mountains are diverse unique features because of the uh, altitude and relief, you know, variation in the altitude and relief uh, as compared to plains. That's why we call it referred as mountain. These are mountain specificity. Ishimura is defined, particularly Jora and colleagues. They call it mountain specificity. Uh, this includes diversity, accessibility, and fragility, and, uh, and marginality. And also, uh, uh, in addition to that, there is a needs and adaptation, which we call it uh, the opportunity for mountains. <clears throat> Well, particularly mountains are, you know, we always consider there is a specific constraint, so it's very difficult to develop mountain areas, but we haven't been able to explore the opportunities and comparative advantages provided by the mountains. These comparative advantages and opportunities lie mainly in the needs, what you call the ecological needs, that is a specific ecological climatic advantage of the mountain areas, particular pockets, and also the diversity that provides by the mountains. So if we uh, transfer this, transform these constraints into opportunity through value addition, value chain, and market development, we can bring, uh, I think, uh, prosperity in the mountains and conserve uh, natural resources and ecosystems by exploiting the comparative advantage that mountain provides. So based, sorry, based on this context, so here I like to focus on what is niche mountain products. Well, I already mentioned because of mountains have a very specific ecological niches. So we have to exploit the biodiversity of that niches for commercializing that product uh, for you know, mountain development. And some of the niche commodities and products include many of the high value, low volume and non-perishable products that have comparative advantages. I'll just briefly discuss later on. And uh, so uh, for that, we also need to exploit the niche market. It's not only ex production side, but also if you use the uh, niche products for marketing of the uh, in specific market niches, then we can only take benefit because niche products because of ecological and uh, uh, natural clean and green products they have a price, special price premiums uh, in the market, in the national and international market. So these are, what are the biodiversity based needs products or commodities? So uh, these are very clear. Many of you already know that cash, cash crops like cardamom, honey, tea, coffee, which are many you know, spices like ginger, turmeric, and mushrooms. Particularly, there are different varieties of mushroom, including this mushroom fungus, uh, what we call ersagumba. Uh, also very, uh, you know, high value products in the high mountain areas. And we have a lot of uh, fruits, indigenous fruits, uh, not nuts. Uh, many of the uh, temperate fruits are originated in the mountains. And vegetable seeds, off-season vegetables, potatoes, seeds, and uh, many of the spices, flowers, and also traditional Himalayan crops, mountain crops, what we call Himalayan superfood because of the nutrients dense uh, characters of these crops like amaranth, barley, naked barley, particularly buckwheat, many types of beans, highland beans, and so on. And also livestock products like I, we already, Dr. Dean just presented the yak. In Himalayan mountains have a unique uh, yak adaptation, so they can provide very nutritious axes, Himalayan organic axes, and very high value for the high price that can be sold in the market, including you know, the special wounds like Kashmiri for salts and so that can be obtained from the mountain goats and many of the highland livestock products. And also including medicinal and aromatics, so many plants and non-timber forest products. These are the uh, biodiversity-based niche products and many of them are agro-based products. So I'll focus on more agriculture-based niche products. 
So uh, let me just explain about the key issues why and rationale why we need to focus on niche value chains. I will uh, briefly discuss about the niche commodity and products. Now I'll go try to briefly about the value chains. Uh, uh, so, and uh, as I already mentioned earlier, that you know, generic value chains uh, is uh, that is practiced elsewhere, particularly in the lowland, is not suitable for the mountain areas because of the mountain specific constraints and the opportunities that mountain provide. So, uh, therefore, we need to. Uh, and also, we need to understand mountain specificity uh, for promoting value chains in the mountains. And uh, in the present time, most of the mountain areas, particularly in the highland Himalayan mountain areas, the value chain, current value chain for many of the niche products are uh, often poor, fragmented, and underdeveloped because cost of products, uh, products and mountain products cannot compete with the lowland because of the you know, structural, uh, the geographical and topographical constraints. And, and also, uh, the lack of specific policy and institutional support and technology for promoting these uh, mountain niche products that have comparative advantage in terms of you know, high value and low volume. And also markets are often secretive and disorganized in the mountain area, many of the mountain areas, and small producer, traders, and service pro provider lack the capacity to interact actively and negotiate with the experienced lowland buyers so that they can uh, market their high value products that are grown in the high mountain areas. Based on this content, I will focus on uh, the specific concept of the value addition, value chain analysis, and market development of these products. So let me just briefly uh, highlight what is value addition. Well, this is very, I think often everybody uh, know well, very well, so this is a process where you know, value is added from each of the value chain, particularly from production to processing, marketing, and, and finally it reaches to consumer. The added value is called value additions, and particularly in economics, uh, when we try to analyze, so if the uh, palm gate price of the product is, you know, Compared to if the consumer uh, price at the final destination is quite higher than the prices at the farm rate, then the product has value added, uh, provided if the market is well, you know, uh, market is well promoted for that and if market functions properly for that. And so, and value addition can be through different ways, uh, through product diversification by changing the product by processing and value addition. Uh, and also we can simply add value just by pack packaging and labeling or branding or, or certification as organic that can uh, face higher premium price in the, in the market just by labeling or packaging or certification also. So the value chain is you know, made of series of, let me just add from value addition to value chain. Value chain is made of series of actors in the sense from input suppliers from uh, to production, processing, marketing to uh, it reaches to consumption sector, you know, uh, to users, buyers and users. And uh, here I'd like to focus on the value chain analysis of the biodiversity uh, based products, particularly niche products where we need to have to understand the improving the performance, interlinkage, and efficiency so that we can form a niche value chain. <clears throat> so, uh, in terms of you know value chain, we can be value chain can be mapped and analyzed using what we call value chain analysis. The value chain can be mapped in terms of actors, product flows, information flows, relationship between different actors, and also analyzing different what are the constraints that exist in the different. Uh, chains in the value sub component of the value chains and as well as and also identifying the opportunities or upgrading strategy for improving the value chains. These are part of value chain. So I'd like just to also briefly discuss difference between supply chain and value chains. Supply chain is just one way flow of the product without any addition of value. It is particularly supply side push. Whereas value chain is, you know, 
value is added in every chain of the you know processes uh, from a production or input supply to until it reaches to consumption and also it is a two-way flow as you seen as you can see from the diagram here uh, and also uh, it, it is demanded by the market consumer side in you know, the value chains two-way flow where it's one way flow <clears throat> So I'm just giving you one examples of the you know, value chain analysis, particularly from the uh, neglected, using neglected underutilized species. Uh, and here the step one is to identify what are the you know, species we want to promote for the value chain. And the second step is to analyze and map it, identify constraints. And th uh, third step is to identify, assess and identify and assess opportunities for intervention, identify the entry points where we can uh, leverage that and then fourth is developing upgrading strategy and finally we can implement monitor and refine the strategy uh, and now uh, specifically i would like to focus on the priority strategy for uh, niche value chain in the mountains because we are focusing on mountains uh, so mountains i already uh, explained that mountain has specific constraints like you know inaccessibility, fragility, marginality, and diversity. So we have to develop niche valuation to address these constraints so that we can promote niche valuation. So for strategy one is, you know, we have to focus on to address the inaccessibility because mountain have a infrastructural and inaccessibility is a constraint. To address that, we need to have to focus on high value, low volume products so that they can compete with low line products. You know, that is a strategy. And second strategy, if you want to address the mountain are very fragile. They are prone to erosion, landslide because shallow soils. So for that, we need to have a high value, low volume communities that can conserve soil and promote ecosystem services so that we have to select that community is not only high value and low volume, but also that can conserve and protect ecosystems. And the third strategy is we need to focus on, in order to address the marginality concept, because many of the poor smallholders are excluded, disadvantaged group are excluded from the developmental process. So in order, in order to address them, we need to have in, inclusive institutions and capacity development, particularly focusing on very poor and women and disadvantaged groups so that we can include in the inclusive process of evaluation for niche mountain crops. And the fourth strategy is uh, do, to add this diversity, we need to also focus on economic sco scope of the, the evaluation so that we can commercialize and market it easily. So I will just briefly about market system analysis. I think many of you already know, so I don't go briefly uh, more detail in this, just briefly, it is a system concept. It also includes the part of value chains. So I'd like to focus here in this market system. It consists of three major com sub components. One is market channel analysis. The second is market price analysis. And the third is margin analysis. So here we need to analyze all three parts so that uh, what are the incentives or disincentives for promoting this niche value products, okay, commodities. So market channel uh, to identify, we need to identify so that the particular product needs products flows in that channel so that it easily flows and link with the market, product, uh, destination market. And in terms of price also, we need to identify price signals so that it can help us to uh, whether there is an incentive for marketing that product. And also market margin analysis, this is a combination price and channel so that it, whether it, there is a profit signals for marketing on that. And, and now we need to focus also, uh, since our niche product is based on biodiversity, so this, this uh, is a framework that I have been, I have worked in the Himalayan mountains uh, as a framework for the promoting the niche based value chains particularly focusing on Himalayan superfoods, Himalayan crops, I, you can see from the pictures. So many of the Himalayan crops are, uh, though they are considered underutilized, but they are nutrient dense, very rich in nutrient, climate resilient, but they are, their valuations have not been developed. 
and they are very biodiverse, okay? And so for that, we need to focus on not only biodiversity in the production system, but also we need to design technologies and institutional mechanism process them because many of the processing technology and institution doesn't exist for these crops. And also in the marketing, marketing system, also diversity in the marketing because single market outlet cannot uh, provide the marketing of those crops. We need to have a specific niche market, specific organic market, uh, very selective market for specific farm market for these crops so that we can promote diversity in the consumption systems because we need to improve the health and nutritional value of the consumers uh, to, you know, for improving global food systems. For that, we need to promote this nutritious uh, Himalayan crops, what we call Himalayan superfood, uh, to promote uh, for nutrition-sensitive agriculture development or nutrition-sensitive food system development. This is a framework. So what I have used based on my work in the Himalayan, in Nepal Himalayas, funded by our biodiversity international with the UN United Nations Environment Program, uh, the global environment facility here, just the mapping of the value chains. What I am presenting is uh, because the, for those mountain crops, it's, uh, there are major subcomponent of value chains are seed system, production, processing, promotion, and consumption, which are uh, the major drivers are four P. I have production, processing, promotion, and policy, these have to be promoted, but there are major constraints are, you know, value chains are underdeveloped, poorly you know, connected because of limited participation of the private sectors, public sector actors, and the information flow is very weak, so, uh, and technology, because of lack of processing technology and many of the seed related technologies, uh, the, uh, the value chains have constraint to promote these crops. So for that, we need uh, you know, upgrading, what uh, upgrading of the value chains. When there are, we identify the mapping, map and con identify the constants, we need to upgrade. So for upgrading, we need to focus on upgrading based on uh, niche markets. For that, we need to identify the niche market and enhance inter-form linkages of the value chains for those crops or commodities and introduce new products. So particularly green, clean, or ecological organics so that they can face higher price and specifically targeting for specific niche consumers and also uh, increase efficiency of those products marketing. <clears throat> and this is the uh, broader framework for the value chain of these crops and based on uh, the components, based on constants map. So these are the strategy I have uh, given. Uh, maybe there's no time to discuss more detail on this. So uh, this is one of the examples for the unreutilized crop. We have work in the uh, Nepal, particularly unreutilized crop like taro, which is Colocasia species, where women have been mobilized for developing this value sense for processing product uh, market and value additions, product diversion and linking to supermarket, and also linking to consumption in the tables for promoting nutritious value of these products and also promoting the increasing the income of the smallholder poor women farmers. Uh, here, I'd like to focus more on the, how we can develop markets and market for this overall niche products. Like I specifically mentioned some of the commodities. Uh, the specifically for niche products, uh, we have uh, many products needs. Not only I mentioned the unreutilized mountain Himalayan crops, but also there are many high value crops like apple or many other items. Uh, for that, or the specific focus, uh, what I like to hear uh, based on our research uh, is that we need to focus because the volume of production uh, by the smaller farmers is very limited. So cooperative arrangement, you know, just linking farmers with traders is not enough unless we have a link. Um, we have we mobilize the communities in the cooperative form so that economic volume of production is met so that we can they can compete with the production with the other products coming from lowland. And also we need to have a specific companies, um, agro companies that focus on niche commodity that can process and also uh, uh, also link with the market process and also provide contract farming services for buyback guarantees so that the products can easily sold and uh, farmers, uh, farmers have a reduced risk of farming production. And also that they have to be linked with export so that, you know, uh, with the cooperative and 
company models, producer company and contract farming. Uh, this value chain can, uh, of the product, this value chain can be linked with the national and international market and it's a benefit that can go to smaller producer. And there are a lot of uh, processing uh, product diversity we have uh, done in the uh, mountain areas. Some, one of the example is Humla, which is on the way to, I think the uh, what I already our chair, co-chair said the Humla she has visited. This is uh, what we work with the, uh, the bakery in the Humla in, with the bakery and hotels and homestays to process and product uh, the some of the underutilized crops like millets or uh, you know amaran processing the bakery products and uh, marketing in the local hotels and tourist hotels <clears throat> linking with the homestays. So the expected impact of the this valuation and market development is that you know uh, it can improve the livelihood and food security of smaller farmers and community in the mountains where poverty incidence is very high compared to lowland can improve resilience, inclusive, sustainable mountain development. It can increase the choices, nutritious diets for the consumers, not only in the mountains, but also in the lowland, in the downstreams of the whole uh, populations. And also provide adaptation to changing climate and market vulnerability. When we have a direct linkage with the market, uh, reduce risks, and also uh, value chain development can enhance you know, livelihood community of the mountain communities and conserve ecosystem services. And here, this is a, just example of how uh, you know, we can have a holistic and inclusive uh, value chain development. Uh, this is a from FU and example, so we can focus on economy. It's not only economic uh, impacts in terms of generating income, but also in terms of generating social, social impacts conserving cultural heritage of the you know, mountain communities through their niche products, and also environmental impacts by conserving uh, these ecosystem services by growing these niche products, biodiverse products, so that we can bring green growth and inclusive growth in the food value chain. So finally, let me just summarize uh, and conclude that value addition, value chain, and niche market development is very important for promoting healthy and eco-friendly mountain niche agro product development and and for that we need to promote nature positive you know production system nature responsive and positive production system with ecological regenerative agriculture such as organic farming and also uh, adoption of certification system particularly for communities participatory guarantee system will be better in the small rock community context with eco labeling, eco ecological labeling, and geographical indication branding, so that that origin product are originated from mountain, with nutrition packed niche products, so that we can increase the value of mountain agro biodiversity, and for that all we need enabling policy support in the form of incentives, subsidies, price support, market linkages, and incentive to producers and entrepreneurs, which are very important to promote mountain niche products. Uh, in the mountains so that we can improve the livelihood of the mountain communities and also conserve natural ecosystem and mountain resources. I think, thank you very much. I think some of the references are given here. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gaujan, for your wonderful talk, lovely pictures. Good to hear about Humla again, yeah. which, is, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is a place I will never forget. And uh, thank you for going in detail about the importance of creating uh, value for niche products in mountainous ecosystems, which as you said, are very fragile, very remote, difficult to reach and uh, other things. Thank you very much. In case any of the participants has a question for Dr. Gauchan, kindly uh, write it in the chat. And, uh, uh, and since uh, Dr. Gauchan has finished his uh, comprehensive presentation well within the time, we could uh, start off 